हेलो फ्रेंड्स आई एम डॉक्टर गिरिराज शर्मा कंसल्टेंट न्यूनेटोलॉजिस्ट एंड टुडे वी विल डिस्कस अबाउट वेंटिलेटर हार्डवेयर बेसिक स्ट्रक्चर ऑफ वेंटिलेटर डिफरेंट पार्ट्स ऑफ द वेंटिलेटर एंड डिफरेंट ट्यूबिंग्स सो फॉर वेंटिलेटर वी नीड वन एयर सोर्स एंड ऑक्सीजन सोर्स सो दिस सेंटर लाइन इज देयर दिस कमिंग फ्रॉम द मैनीफोल्ड एंड कंप्रेसर सो दिस वाइट वन इज द ऑक्सीजन लाइन एंड दिस ब्लैक वन इज द एयर लाइन and this is the suction this is different so these two lines we need and here this is the oxygen point and this is the air point so here we have to connect in the oxygen point we have to connect the this air we have to connect and the oxygen we have to connect so this black one is the air white one is the oxygen so this will air and oxygen tubings will go inside the ventilator from behind the ventilator these are going inside the ventilator so here inside the ventilator blender will be there that blender will mix air and oxygen and required fi2 we can set from here and blender will deliver that much fi2 okay and behind what are the things this flow sensor connector here the this space is there to connect the flow sensor okay here some nebulizers also we can connect and this is the switch on and off button here is there and this is the power supply so inside going after going to the blender inside there will be low pressure chamber after that there will be flow meter will be there flow meter that will deliver the required flow and after that required fi2 and required flow will come through this inspiratory port so he, this is the inspiratory port this is the expiratory port so this is going through ventilator to the baby inspiratory circuit will be always will be blue expiratory will be white so inspiratory circuit is going to the humidifier here and this will deliver to the baby through the inspiratory limb okay this white one is the expiratory limb expiratory air will go to the expiratory wall here will be expiratory wall will be there so here this expiratory wall will be there this is the expiratory wall assembly that we have discussed how it functions okay so here in humidifier this one is the temperature sensor here temperature sensor probe this is the proximal probe and this one is distal probe we have to connect this one is the heating probe heating probe we have to one probe we have to connect here in inspiratory limb second if you have Uh, here in expiratory limb also you have heating wire then we have to connect this one is the expiratory limb here in this circuit there is no heating wire in expiratory limb so we have to keep it free only so this here is the switch is there for to on the humidifier chamber here this if we want to remove we have to press this like this and then we have to remove this is the heating plate this will be heated and here water chamber in we have to fill the water at the required level here temperature should be around 37 38 degrees celsius okay here different modes will be there like here invasive and non invasive in newborns always we should keep at invasive mode only we can change here so always we should keep and different types of alarms will be there here that i have told you so if heating probe alarm temperature probe alarm these probes are loose then that will alarm this water level alarm will there high temperature alarm will be there so these are alarms of this humidifier for any ventilator we need a air and oxygen source so for air source there will be a compressor air compressor that will deliver air at high pressure and then will be a oxygen source oxygen cylinder manifold will be there that will deliver oxygen at high pressure so air at high pressure and oxygen at high pressure will go through the central lines like central lines oxygen and air will go to the an icu to the air point and oxygen points then we have to connect that air and oxygen tubings of ventilator to the points that air and oxygen will go inside the ventilator behind the ventilator that i will show you later that where these tubings are there so inside the ventilator 
there will be one blender will be there so blender will mix the air and oxygen okay so we have to set the required fio2 and blender will mix the proportion of the air and oxygen that mixed air will go to the low pressure chamber this is the high pressure chamber then we go to low pressure chamber and after going here will be one fio2 monitor will be there so what is doing this is measuring the delivered fio2 blender is mixing the air and oxygen and giving the required fio2 this fio2 monitor is measuring that what we have said that is delivering or not so this is measured fio2 and this is set fio2 after going to this low pressure chamber this mixed air and oxygen will go to the inspiratory circuit before that even flow meter will be there so before there even flow meter there this will measure the flow okay this will actually give how much flow is required that will be given by the flow meter so this even is controlling the quality of gases this is controlling the quantity of gas how much gas is required so flow meter generally most of the old ventilators we have to set the flow at 6 to 8 liters of per minute but many of the modern ventilators we don't have to set the flow they will take automatically required flow okay so this is the flow meter so generally we set flow 3 to 5 times of the minute ventilation so minute volume five times of the minute volume is the required flow for any baby for hfo it is higher around it is like 15 liter per minute so up to the 15 liter per minute also is required flow in hfo so after going to the inspiratory circuit these are compressed gases so air and oxygen mixed these are the compressed gases so all compressed gases are cold and dry so compressed gases will be cold and dry because when we compress any gas that there will be condensation will be there humidity will come out and condensation will be there so gas will become dry and cold so before going to the baby we have to heat and humidify that gas okay so here first there will be on humidifier chamber humidifier will be there this humidifier will heat and humidify the gases before going to the baby because we cannot give the baby cold and dry gases that will be harmful to for the baby's lungs for that this humidifier will humid heat and humidify the gases so here at 30 this humidifier will heat the gases at 37 degree celsius and humidity of relative humidity of 100% so we need relative humidity of 100% and temperature at 37 degree celsius here temperature this water level should be up to the mark and here after heating and humidifier gases will go to the inspiratory limb of the circuit inspiratory limb of the circuit and then they will go to the baby here is the inspiratory circuit and these are baby's lungs so between this ed tube and yps we have to connect one flow sensor so this will measure the flow or volume of the go gases going to the baby and coming out of the baby so what flow sensor does this will measure the flow that will be converted to the volume so this will measure like tidal volume inspiratory tidal volume and expiratory tidal volume also so here near the yps this flow sensor will be there to measure the flow or tidal volume and after that gases will go to the lung so this is the inspiratory chamber then after coming from expiratory they will go to the expiratory limb so if there is no resistance here all the gases will go come here and will go directly here nothing will go here so in ventilator how does ventilator functions so here tps ventilator functions as the rule of the tps means uh, this is the tps so here this one is inspiratory this is the expiratory limb so to deliver the gases to the lungs we should we have to create some resistance at the expiratory limb so here some resistance should be there 
so that gases will go to the baby's lungs. Otherwise, nothing will go to the baby's lungs. That will go directly to the expiratory. So here, one wall will be there that is called expiratory wall assembly. Expiratory wall assembly will be there that will create resistance and air will go to the baby's lungs. So how much resistance we have to create that depends on the how much pressure is required. So actually the flow sensor will give feedback to the microprocessor. Microprocessor is the brain of the ventilator that decides everything algorithm will be inside the microprocessor. This everything is the body of the ventilator and this is the brain of the ventilator. So flow sensor will measure the flow that will give feedback to the microprocessor. This will uh, detect the spontaneous breath of the baby. This, this acts as a light trigger also. This will detect the spontaneous breath of the baby and give feedback to the microprocessor and microprocessor will instruct to the expiratory valve to deliver the breath. Okay. So this is detecting the spontaneous breath, giving feed feedback to the microprocessor. Microprocessor will give instruction to the expiratory valve that we should deliver the breath. For how much time we should deliver breath? So here at this wall will be there. So when microprocessor is giving signal, this wall will go up. Here there was nothing was going. This is going creating some resistance. So PWP will be delivered. So lungs were collapsed when this wall was here, lungs were collapsed. When signal is there, then this wall is closing and PWP is generating. Some pressure is, will be generated here that will be transferred to the lungs also. So when pressure is generated in expiratory and inspiratory limb, that will be transferred to the baby's lungs at same as like 5 peep we have said. So for 5 peep this much resistance will be created. Here 5 pressure will be generated, here 5 pressure will be generated, then that will be transferred here. So peep during peep some ex lungs will be expanded like this and here. When we have to deliver peep, this expiratory wall will go like more up and it will close more, it will, it will create more resistance and then here pressure will be more like if we said PIP of 15, here 15 pressure will be generated, that pressure will be transferred to the lungs and here also 15 pressure will be generated. So during PWP 5 pressure was there, during PIP 15 pressure was there. So lungs will be inflated. So this was the nothing was there, zero pressure during PWP and during PIP. So microprocessor is giving signal to the expiratory wall expiratory valve is closing and delivering PWP and PIP. So PWP will be delivered throughout the respiratory cycle. Okay, so this wall will be always like here only and during PIP it will go up. Okay, so for PWP will be delivered for expiratory time T, PIP will be for inspiratory time. So this is the about the expiratory valve assembly, TPs, microprocessor and how breath is delivered to the baby.